if I was going to ask you for advice as a leader of franchise renovation, what, what would be the advice you would give me? Relationship building is everything. And it's, you know, it's one thing to either dictate or to ask for things to be done to meet the needs and goals of the company. But it's another thing to really understand, stop and listen to what their needs are and figure out how your needs and their needs can match together. David Hoskins, so excited to have you with us today. Thank you for being here. So I'm not going to spoil anything by saying any background about you. I'm going to ask you, tell us about your background. Absolutely. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Um, so a little bit about my background. Um, so I, um, you know, I, I grew up around construction and facilities with my family and, uh, and uh, renovating houses and things like that. Um, you know, I got away from it and joined the military, so I was in the Army for a number of years. Um, and when I got out of the Army, of course, that construction and renovations and facilities kind of drew me back to it. Uh, I ended up going to work for 7-Eleven Corporation and worked for their uh, uh, company for many years and uh, kind of grew through the ranks. Um, I um, held a few different positions, but um, the last position I held was... Uh, the renovation, I was the uh, national renovation manager for the company. So we renovated about 6,000 sites over uh, two years um, with, a, with a pretty big team of collaboration and um, integrating a bunch of programs. Um, I left 7-Eleven uh, several years ago and uh, started my own company. And so um, I started a construction company. Um, and during kind of the downturn in 2008, we focused on just plumbing and doing doing only plumbing. And uh, I obtained my, my plumbing license during that venture. And um, uh, that company was acquired uh, by another company after many years of successful business. Um, and then I decided after that to go back into the corporate world. And uh, I landed at G6 Hospitality um, in their facilities uh, group as a director of facilities. Um, and that's that's since evolved now into, um, as they sold their franchise part, or excuse me, their corporately owned portion of the business, they sold uh, sold that own side and now it's fully franchised. So my uh, position evolved into construction design and renovations. Wow. So... Right now, you're in construction design and renovations for over 2,000 franchise for G6 Hospitality. So I would think that most of your leadership is by influence. How, how would you describe your leadership? That is, that's a great question, Elizabeth, because uh, one of the things that I experienced in the most recent change of my job and my job title um, and even uh, um, my teammates, um, you know, previously we had owned assets and we had budgets and we had um, our own vendors that we managed. Um, and that was, you know, challenging in itself. Um, but that evolved and now um, really that influence factor uh, has kicked in because we don't have vendors, we don't have budgets. Um, all we do is influence our owners and help them um, either build new sites or convert existing sites and do renovations, uh, you know, ongoingly for their property improvement plans. So it's uh, it's it's a different way to look at things when you have budgets and you can manage to expectations when you're the stakeholder versus uh, being you know having influence over um, that particular owner, but but no no. No control. It's really just influence. It's relationships that you build um, and trying to get uh, what you want to get accomplished for the goals of the company. Yeah. One of the things is like you have a team under you. How do you manage a team that must lead by influence as well? 
Yeah, that's a great question too. And uh, you know, as as we evolved as a company from the owned to the franchise side, um, I've had hundred percent turnover in my staff. So um, we've you know uh, we have a lot of a few new um, team members, you know, project managers and team members on the team, and we have some that have been with the company. Uh, you know, one that uh, that I actually just promoted. Um, been with the company for 28 years, so it's it's kind of a, a a good mix. We have a couple of new and a couple of existing um, um, employees that have been with the company for a long period of time. Um, you know, and everybody, um, you know, I think we lead everybody differently. If uh, if there was one leadership. Um, idea that worked for all. I wish I knew what it was, but there's really not. It's, it's, it's uh, that interpersonal um, communication, um, being patient, understanding what their needs are and their wants and their desires and what drives them. Um, that's what's really what makes a good leader is, is being able to identify what those needs, wants, and desires are and to help um, enable them to perform. That's, that's a great point. Um, interestingly, I had a spoken with somebody not too long ago, and one of the things that, they talk, that we talk about is like precisely treating each individual as an individual and learning them with that respect, you know? So I like that. Um, as as a, someone who is doing performance improvement plans and opening new properties and everything else and franchises, um, what are some of your biggest challenges when it comes to um, your job? I would say the biggest challenge, um, and it, I mean, it might be surprising, but the biggest challenge is um, companies of this size have so many different, uh, you know, competing goals. You know, you have, um, you know, the operations side, which focuses on brand performance. You have the development side, which their goal is to, you know, do net new unit growth and for, for growth of the company. Uh, on the financial side, it's all about making the numbers, right? Making the numbers work. Um, so there's a lot of competing goals with the company. And even though this company um, has been around for many, many years, um, it's still evolving. And so it's like having a new company, a lot of new people, um, and learning um, how to balance the relationships with all the competing needs has probably been one of the bigger challenges. I am sure of that is biggest challenge to most companies and in the hospitality industry more than ever, you know, um, especially after the pandemic and all the changes that we have had to deal with. So, yeah. you know, if, if I was going to ask you for advice, as, as leader of franchise renovation, what, what would be the advice you would give me? Oh, let's see. If I were to give advice um, as a leader in, in a franchise, you know, relationship building is everything. And it's, you know, it's one thing to, um, um, you know, to, to either dictate or to ask for things to be done to meet the needs and goals of the company. But it's another thing to really understand, stop and listen to what their needs are and figure out how your needs and their needs can match together. And it, it, it really, it's, it, it's a negotiating game sometimes. Um, it's a, it's a um, uh, trying to find common ground and building good, strong relationships to mm -hmm. where when you really need to get something done, that you have a relationship to where you can ask for something to be done and vice versa when they need something. It's, it's a win-win relationship with that negotiation. And that's probably the best advice I could give is try to find the common ground, build those relationships to where it's a win-win. I love that. And I remember the other day when you were talking about um, that your goal is to build coaching cultures and in hospitality. And I thought that was a very powerful statement um, when you said that. So tell me about that. Yeah, so um, 
I think one of the one of the things that um, that I've always thought is where where you have a weakness, um, if you um, you know learn it and teach it, you become it, it, it doesn't be you know it, it wipes away that weakness. And uh, one of my big weaknesses uh, in just uh, being in the positions that I've been in is learning how to stop and listen. And that's one of the things that um, that in learning about coaching is really it's about listening. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, I saw the connection as I started to pursue um, – you know, my education in coaching, I saw a connection and a need between our group and our ownership group, right? Mm -hmm. They're trying to tell us something and we really have a hard time listening. We're trying to give them information. And there's many, many, many people in the organization giving them the information that they need. But they never really stop to listen. What are the needs that they have or the desires that they have or, and how can we, uh, doesn't mean that we'll always agree, right? But where right. can we find common right. ground? Um, and so, um, you know, that that goes with, you know, the team members on my team. Um, you know, what what types of things can I do to help develop them to be, become better listeners? And so that coaching, that coaching culture is what I thought would be super beneficial in, um, you know, in pursuing education. And we had you know, a, a great leader and teacher come on and help us build our house of leadership and give us an understanding of what that coaching culture is like. And so we talk about that in our weekly meetings and how, how do we listen better and how do we, um, how do we gather information without asking the specific questions, but more, more questions surrounding the ideas. Makes total sense. I mean, that, Ability to listen is, is one of the greatest challenges and the greatest gift that a leader can bring to the table. I, I want to take the, the opportunity because I just remember a funny story when I was working with you that I think is, it speaks volumes about your humility and your ability to really connect with people. When we had the freezes in Dallas, Texas, a uh, couple of years back, maybe about three years ago, and I remember that we were all having problems with our homes and we were all having problems with, you know, um, frozen pipes and bursted pipes and everything else. And yet somehow you managed to drive yourself in those icy roads to go and help multiple people, regardless of, you know, their position or regard regardless of where they were. So you were just amazing and and that showed the kind of leadership that you bring to the table and that's why I'm so proud and honored to know you yeah i think uh i think when when we're in situations that are um you know emergency situations um i'm always thinking how like what can i do to help like what skills do i have different from other people that i can help and uh, you know, fortunately, one of those skills that I had was plumbing, and that was one of the biggest disasters. You know, we had a freeze, everybody's pipes were bursting, and, uh, you know, I was getting calls, you know, uh, because I was in that industry asking, do you have any plumbers that can come out and help? And all the plumbers and all the emergency companies were completely busy, and they're booking out for next month. And so I'm like, well... So I'll throw some tools in my car and go see what I can do to help. And so um, after the first, uh, I remember the first person that I helped was actually on the same street as I lived. And it was an elderly couple and they had no water and they had some of their pipes burst and I got their water back on. And, uh, you know, and they asked me, well, how much to owe you? I said, I said, nothing. My, my dad passed this skill on to me. <laughs> I'm just here to help. You know, I'm just glad I get you water on. And then word kind of got around and it built. And so um, I spent a pretty big majority of that week um, just trying to get people's water back on and get and helping. And I enjoyed that. So um, I enjoy taking skills that I have uh, and helping people. And so that was, uh, it was very rewarding. 
What uh, what has been your? Um, I'm sure between Seven Eleven and and G Six Hospitality, you have so many stories to share. But what has been one of the most? Um, I guess that you never forgot stories of um, challenges or humility. Goodness, that is a good question. Um, you know, I have so many different stories, and um, you know, I think the biggest thing. Um, is just the ability, the ability to travel to so many different places um, and visit properties. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I don't think it's one particular story, but just the ability to travel and see how things are differently done in all the different cities and states in the United States. Um, it's just amazing how um, just being geographically located in different areas, how how things are done differently. And I think that that's, uh, it's interesting um, as, you know, the more I, you know, even with Motel 6 and Studio 6 hotels, I, you know, after working here for four years, I'm like, oh, I've seen everything, you know, I've seen every property. And then every time I go to a property, I see something different. <laughs> and I'm like, gosh, I would have never guessed that. But yeah, it's, uh, you know, even, uh, you know, working in plumbing, uh, it was, you know, my dad told me a long time ago, he said, you know what, um, no matter how, ma how many years you're in the business of your expertise, no matter how many years you've been doing it, you always learn something new every day. So keep your eyes open and watch out because that's really what it's all about. Yeah, and that's one of the greatest gifts that you have always brought, which is, you know, your curiosity and, and uh, desire to learn. That's why we built such a great partnership when I was uh, with G6, and now we still keep in touch, you know. So appreciate your, um, your commitment and your passion. I always say that as long as you bring passion, you can learn anything that anybody wants to teach you. That is true, and, and you inspire me in, in your... Uh you know, post, uh, post hotel career. Now, um, you inspire me on, on just watching social media and different things that you put out and the programs that you're working on. So I love to, uh, uh, to see what, what's in store next. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I always come up with something new, so we'll see where the podcast take us. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's exciting, but, uh, no, it is, Really, really good to have you with us and, and thank you for agreeing to come today. And if anybody would like to talk to you, whether it's about, you know, positions or whether it's about franchise renovations or um, our company, um, your company, Motel 6 Studio 6, anything, what would be the best way for them to connect with you? I think the best way is probably via email uh, or LinkedIn. Uh, there's messaging on LinkedIn. Uh, you can find me, um, you know, my email address would, is hoskins underscore david at g6hospitality.com. Um, I have, you know, several relationships with, um, you know, individuals and um, as are, you know, we've met through our careers and things. We continue to meet up once a month or once every few months and have discussions about industry standards and things. So I love to uh, uh, to brainstorm and to meet as many people as I can. So I'm always welcome to you know an email or a message uh, through either. Um, love to learn about what what you're doing or what somebody's doing and how um, we can learn from each other. Absolutely. Now we'll continue talking about leadership lessons in hospitality for sure and i appreciate you coming in today um we are running out of time for today folks but uh, i hope that you sign up and make sure that you subscribe and like us and let us know what we can bring you next thank you so much for your time today oh.